Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another ink profile, another singles profile. And I have to thank the viewers because uh, the votes came in pretty quickly for brown and other colors too, but I counted up the most votes for brown. So yesterday I started working with this beautiful ink. This is Birmingham uh, John Arbuckle Coffee Bean. Their names are sometimes long. And this is brown and it's also a nice shading ink. And that's another thing that the viewers spoke about. Um, more than one mentioned, uh, let's have some nice shading inks. And I believe this qualifies. So anyway, here we are. And uh, so I wanted to thank you for voting. That's really cool. Um, brown and green, that wouldn't have been my guess. So I'm really happy to know that, that that's, you know, in demand. And that way we can, we can go from there. So um, let's start with how I usually do. <laughs> we'll put this in the water test and um, see what happens. I really don't know, uh, but I'm, you know, after working with it, I'm thinking that it's not gonna completely stay. Uh, but the question is, will we still be able to read it after it takes a bath? So we'll see. I'm really not sure <laughs> at all. Okay, so there we go. Now, just a quick uh, glance over this one. Whoops. Uh, the Tasha Dye Dye, which it was uh, orange. Yes, orange. It was actually quite orange, <laughs> completely disappeared and is a totally um, normal fountain pen ink that it, it's not, uh, doesn't do well in the water. But that was the first of the Tasha inks to do a complete vanishing act. So I wanted to follow up on that. And then we've got four notebooks here, but uh, as usual, I'd like to start in the Rhodia Gold book so we can get started looking at this brown ink. Whoops. <clears throat> Well, my bookmark's not very sturdy. Okay, and on our way to do that, let's look at the chromatography. This isn't quite as impressive on coffee filter, but that's what I have right now. And But I do see some really interesting stuff coming out. A little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and even almost orange. So it's it was very interesting, even though um, I would have liked to have seen it on the other paper. So there we go. You know, the regular chromatography strips. So... Here we are in the uh, Rhodia Gold book, and I'm seeing shading. It, it may not be dramatic, but it's it's quite pretty actually. Uh, where I see it, and and I I'll show you the other ink sam um, the other writing samples in a minute may give us a better look. But here it is on a little piece of Tamoy River paper, and it gave quite a bit of uh, you know different. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to say shading, but, you know, dark to light on there. But it's really hard to catch today. Got some interesting lighting going on. Um, of course, this is available at Birmingham, the Birmingham Pen Company, but it's BirminghamPens.com when you go online uh, in the USA, coming out of Pennsylvania. Uh, it's made in Germany, but their company is, is in Pennsylvania. And it is it is available in a 5 mil sample for $1.49 and a 30 mil bottle for $5.99. So that's good to know. And uh, here we, we have it in the broad nib. And I really liked it in the broad nib best. It was just, it showed the shading best. And uh, I just like how it popped on there. Then we got to be careful when we look at this sample here. This is a Lamy Fine nib. And But what happened was, I liked it so much in this pen that I went around writing with it, you know, all day. And I didn't realize, but if you look how light it is here, and then how it looks down here, that's the same pen. So it really was, needed another fill. I had only put in maybe a, a third of a converter because I had the small sample. Oh, I want to say thank you, too, to my friend, uh, my pen friend, uh, Frederick, for sending this uh, sample. Thank you. This is a beautiful ink. Um, so it, it did much better once I had come back in and filled the converter. And you'll see some more <laughs> some more of my experiments gone crazy there in a minute. Uh, this was the glass nib and it really did end up looking black. But I didn't find that at all to be the case in the broad nib. So it's that initial dip and how it behaves, you know. It just, uh, let's turn over on the back. I don't believe we had any bleed through. Not even on the uh, glass nib did it bleed through, so it was well behaved. 
So um, there we have that. Let's go on to the next notebook though because we got quite a bit to look at there too. Um, I am sticking with the little caliber, CVS caliber notebook. Um, you know, they're real inexpensive, but that's not the only draw, really. They'll hold anything, and they don't bleed through, except for when you lay it on thick with a paintbrush. And I, I'm finding that I really appreciate knowing what happens on this paper. So, bear with me here. Here it is, just kind of globbed on. And that didn't bleed through at all. And that surprised me, in a way, because, see, the orange did, you know, a little bit. And then, so this is the broad nib, and this is the Lamy fine nib. Um, it looks much better on CVS caliber paper in a broad nib, but that's no surprise to any of us who have been doing this for a while. Oh, that's interesting. I think we are going to be able to read that water test. That's cool. Okay, so next is the Nemesine notebook. Oh, it was fun on here. I tell you, it was fun. <laughs> um, here it is. I guess I've got my angle off because I keep holding things where you can't see it. I'm going to have to make adjustments in a little while. Um, I love how this shows. This definitely shows you how dark it can look and how light it can look. And then we're in the Moon Man Mini glass nib pen in here and it's kind of right in the middle. It's kind of like almost a medium nib. Maybe, you know, a thick fine nib or a medium nib. And uh, I was very, very pleased with it. Now, it lightened down at the bottom because I just didn't dip again. I wanted to see how, you know, if it would pass my test of doing this little bit and make it to the end, and it did. Uh, really pleased with this, uh, with this ink. This is gorgeous. It's kind of a medium brown, but with the shading, it just kind of adds a lot. And I wish I could, I wish it would show up better, but I do always ask that people... Or I advise that people should get a sample, and the sample being a dollar forty nine, not bad for five mils. You can do a lot with that much ink. So here we are. This is the uh, Cafe Note by Nanami Paper Company in the uh, Tamoy River paper with a seven uh, millimeter line grid. We got it in the broad nib here on the left, and uh, the Lamy fine nib on the right. Uh, and, and continuing, I'm tracking all my intermittent fasting and low carb, and I'm studying potassium. I'm really not very smart when it comes to uh, nutrition, and so I'm working on that. And I'm trying to, I'm a picky eater too. Um, so I'm working on just finding the things that I can eat, you know, that are rich in um, the nutrients, and then trying to choose the best thing because it's not all, potatoes, not always the best thing, but. Um, Anyway, goodness, off topic so early, that's crazy. Okay, but I really liked it. Now, I wonder if you can see what I'm seeing. Like, I'm seeing shading at the top of these um, letters real nice, but, oh, it's hard to display for you. It really is. Um, wish it was a little easier. Let's see how it looks on the Tamoy River Paper 52 gram. Here it is, and... Uh, Okay, so here's where you see. This was where the discovery was first made. I said, no, that doesn't look right. I knew this was more saturated. So really my uh, pen was running out of ink. And, um, and I hadn't picked up on it yet. So I put post-refill and I lined through that. Because that's the Lamy Fine Nib there and there. So it made quite a difference. When, you know, and and uh, you'll see it stayed consistent throughout. I made sure to scribble with it on another paper and not just have that nib, I mean, uh, yeah, feed saturated and come straight on here. No, I made sure because I wanted everything to have an equal chance, all the papers. So anyway, in the broad nib here, and, oh, it, it just irks me that I can't see the shading through the camera, but I can with my eye. You know, it's not as drastic as SBRE brown shades. Um, it, it isn't, but it's there and it's pretty. I like it. Um, so there it is in the fine nib, okay? And then i um, got quite a few papers to go through here. Here's the Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper. <clears throat> so here we are. And again, it, it did really good in showing, you know, some darker shading and lighter. And I see the shading here. It's quite nice, actually. It's it, I would, you know, like, it's not drastic shading, like I said before, but. Here it is in the broad nib, and I had I, I redid this even though this looked fair, but uh, I thought that it made a big difference. 
um, after the ref the converter was refilled and everything. So, you know, mistakes like that are good to catch. And then the next time, I probably wouldn't even happen because I'd be on the lookout for that. Here's the Rhodia Dot Grid 80 gram, and here it is. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, broad nib up here, and uh, fine nib where you know. Huh. I wrote there. So I wrote on several of these and this was where I just stopped and I said, whoa, something's wrong. And then I refilled the converter and there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. But this just to me is a nice rich brown, not so dark that it looks black to the eye at all. And not so light that it, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't become something else. It doesn't become orange. It doesn't become red. It just stays nice and brown. So, um, okay. Huh, I should be turning those over, I suppose. I, I'm just not seeing bleed through at all on anything, so it seemed a little bit weird to do that. Okay, here's the Hamlin Optic 90 gram. We are on the back of a very significant, you know, test page. So just try to ignore the right-hand column here. Um, I guess I'm being a paper miser. I've got plenty of this, so I'll probably pick up a new one for page soon. Um, here it is, and it did nice shading on here too, uh, especially in the broad nib. Not not as much in the fine nib, but I can still see it in places, especially when I print that way. Um, printing seems to lend itself to that. And But I do a combination on these. I do some curvy uh, squiggles so you can see that too. Okay, here is Loistrom 1917 dot grid. And we will turn this one over because there's always a possibility that could have gone through. Here it is in the broad nib, and it shades even on here um, and in the fine nib. Whoop, I did it again. I actually did it both places. Okay, I'm going to have to start assuming because it's always the broad and the fine unless I say otherwise. Very slight show through on the painted on portion of the brown ink there. Oh, that's a nice view too. You can see that um, true to color. Okay, final paper sample is Office Depot College Rule Notebook. I'm finishing that notebook up, but I have enjoyed it. There it is. And uh, we're getting a glimpse of that lighter portion of it. I'm trying to get the best lighting. Here it is in the broad nib, and I do, even on this paper and the Loistrum, I see some shading. It's very subtle. More subtle on these uh, more thirsty papers, but we still get it. And hardly any shading on the fine nib in this, uh, on this paper here. So, wow, I just, you know, like I said, I, I ran the pen almost dry and didn't even realize it because I liked it so much. So, that's how much I really, it surprised me, this ink. Okay, here we go. So, that is really amazing, right? It's been in there and... It is still readable, and it's still brown. Lighter brown than it started, though. So, let's look at our panel. Our comparison panel is interesting today. Oh my, that pelican brown looks almost orange. Okay. But right in the middle is our ink of the day. Birmingham John Arbuckle Coffee Bean, right in the middle. Um, now, I don't have every brown there is. <laughs> uh, although, I did go through quite a bit of testing... Back when I couldn't get SBRE brown, so I was I was pretty determined to find something that matched. So I've got, but those are in the lighter range. So in this darker range, this is what I have pretty much. I will show you um, one more panel that does have the SBRE brown on it. I didn't put it on here because I didn't feel it it compared well. Actually, I felt like in my collection of samples, Sitz Cruz Knock Chestnut Brown was the closest. Very interesting. Huh. And then Monteverde Scotch Brown seems darker. There'd have to be more experimentation, though, to see. And some of these are just, you know, they're not, they're not really all that similar. But hopefully you've seen one of these that kind of gives you a... A helpful anchor in figuring out where this Birmingham ink falls. Um, like I said, the Pelican Brown, uh, that's not a mistake. That's actually how I'm seeing it too. It really does look kind of orange. I like it in a nib. I have it in a medium. The Mont Blanc uh, 145 that was uh, gifted to me from a pen friend, and it looks brown in that medium nib. So 
I, I don't know what to say about that, really. And uh, Monteverde brown sugar is much darker, so, huh. And then <laughs> here's the Montegrappa coffee brown. That's darker than coffee bean, too. This is just a warm but not too light brown, I think. It's the way I would describe it, anyway. Okay, so we've got uh, one more thing. Oh, that's right. I said I was going to... Now, I have the Birmingham Pens John Arbuckle on a small one so that I can show you... Well, let's put it in the middle since that's what we've been doing, at least to start with. I just wanted to show you how it compared with SBRE Brown because lots... Now, that's brightening the SBRE Brown. That's what the camera does. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not 100% accurate, but it's close enough that you are comparing, you know, you can see the lighterness of it. Now I'm going to move it over so you can see it next to Tasha uh, Golden Wheat. So here's the Birmingham that we're doing today on the right, and here's the Golden Wheat. Now see, that's warmer and uh, different, way different, uh, and yet they've got something in common there, I think. Okay, so most of the rest of those are, are redundant. Okay, the other thing I wanted to say was, uh, very soon I should have in my possession um, Tasha C-H-A, Cha, I guess. Anyway, it's brown, and so that'll be coming, and I'm hoping it like beats the ink flight here so that I can do a, a profile on that one, but we'll see what happens. And let's look at the visual journal. Um, it did lighten up considerably on here. Let's keep this one available, kind of, um, you know. You, that way you could see we do get some variation. Let's see here. Um, you know, you, you get the darkness there. Let me hold that up a little further. And you and then it lightens and you get all of that. None of those colors that was that were in the chromatography came out, which, you know, just interesting. And then I was really happy with this. This was fun because I, I simply love it when it gives all these, you know, variances in the color. All, all where you can just see it. I like that. Because it does go very dark down to very light. Huh. Fun. Lots of fun. So there we have it. Um, I would think that this would be a good... Uh, well, I'm impressed with it. And... I have just, like, used so much of it. You know, and that's that always tells me. Because, <laughs> I mean, I just didn't, I just wanted to keep writing with it. And so I wrote several letters, and, and I kept writing in my journal, in my gratitude journal yesterday with it. So I was impressed with it. Um, okay, so what's next as far as what's going on here on the channel are two things. Uh, that Not counting the ink flight, which will be here soon, I'm sure. I'm I'm expecting it probably by Tuesday, but in addition to that, I've got the three remaining Tasha inks, uh, the brown, the sorry sky blue, and the Bidori green. They're on their way, and it's saying Monday. So that's tomorrow, so I don't know. That seems like um, a miracle, but we'll see. And then uh, I have also a small pen allowance video to do. It will be very short, but it's a couple of little things pen related, not pens. Um, that I just wanted to share with you. And so then we'll have the ink flight. So thank you so much again for voting. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Brown and green were the clear front runners. So I just decided to go ahead and run with a brown ink. And then um, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. I hope I can find it real quick. Um, I have more browns. I'm going to pause. There, I had the notebooks that we were just uh, uh, looking at covering these. These are the the rest of the browns that were that are relatively new to me that have been sent by pen friends. Um, so that's these, and then the, this represents everything in my brown uh, shell case box. And we'll just run through them real quick. So I got the Sitz Cruznock Chestnut Brown that we we saw on the panel, and then the uh, J. Arbonne Lee de Thee. Now, I'm not sure how you say that, but uh, and then oh, this is one I want to do too, uh, along with the KWZ. But this is the Roar and Klinger Sapia. That's an interesting ink. It, it, it's almost too dark to be called brown, but that's what we get into sometimes. And then, um, 
Krishna Inks Dark Chocolate. Another one that's very dark and very interesting. I can't wait to see the chromatography on that one. And I know I want to do a, a review on that one. Um, whoops, I just dropped one. Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz. That's a pretty one. Very interesting. Okay, I'm retrieving this. Oh, here's one that's sort of Diamine Brandy Dazzle. I couldn't figure out whether this was actually brown. It looks brown in some cases. In some cases, it looks more warm and orangey red. And then a light one here, Diamine Sapia. Uh, Birmingham Shadyside Walnut Street Brown. It, that's got a lot of warm red in it, I think, too. But Oh, this one, last but not least, uh, I really definitely am planning. Um, so there's two of those I know for sure. Um, anyway, we'll go back through that. KWZ Cappuccino. Uh, my pen friend uh, Marta sent this one, and I'm, I want to review that one. Um, I want to do them all, but, you know, I'm running into this thing about the time, you know, how much time there is. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Yeah, so they're all worthy of looking at everything. And then these are just the ones that, that have been hanging around longer with me, I'd say. Monteverde Brown Sugar. That was on the panel, too. Actually, this is another good point. I'm going through little by little and switching so that all of them have the same uh, color ring because it's just not... You, I'm not getting an accurate enough on these Walmart ones. for Especially for the camera and everything. It'd be okay if it was just for me. So I am doing that, replacing them. Um, these old ones seem okay. They're they're not as bad, but I'd still like to replace them eventually. Monteverde Scotch Brown, Noodler's Walnut. Can't remember if that. No, I didn't have that on. That was much much darker. Montegrappa Coffee Brown. That showed up there on the on the panel. Let's see. <laughs> I'm looking at two different panels. Well, Noodler's Beaver is really red. I don't know what happens. A lot of times I end up with red, you know, a different color mixed in because I just can't tell where to put it. J. Arbonne Tear Defue. That hmm, that looks red there, but again, this paper can confuse us. Anyway, so you can see there are quite a few browns hanging around. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what I had. Diatrementus Khaki. Uh, in some cases, I may have already, yeah, like I know I've profiled Noodler's Antietam. I know I've profiled that, but I don't just move them completely out if I think they're going to be nice on comparison panels. They stay. So that's that's what we're looking at there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> little add-on. Primarily working out of the ones that are that have appeared, that have been uh, gifted to me. So thank you, everyone, who's gifted me with ink samples. It's much appreciated, and I will eventually get around to... I, I want to say most of them, <laughs> anyway, so... Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.